Nitrates. Let's talk pharmacology. Nitrates are a super, super high yield drug because they save lives. But before we get into nitrates, I want to give a shout out to Sangas, uh, Romeo Johnson, one of the best vocal coaches, hooked me up with some clothing, a little bit of personalization right there with Dr. Z right there. So Sangas clothing, uh, Romeo Johnson, a little background on who he is. Romeo Johnson is the best vocal coach in the world. He was Michael Jackson's vocal coach, Janet Jackson's vocal coach, lead backup singer for both of them, Beyonce's vocal coach, um, Trey Songs, Usher, you name somebody, he's worked with them. So uh, shout out to Romeo Johnson and Sangas Clothing for hooking me up always with the flyest gear. So thank you so much again, Romeo Johnson, for that. Now let's get into nitrates. So there are two types of nitrates. There's short acting and there's long acting. So short acting nitrates, we're going to be dealing with them sublingually or with sprays. But for the sake of the boards, let's focus on sublingual because that's the one the boards are going to test on. You're going to put it under the tongue and you're going to allow it to dissolve. It's fast acting. Whereas long acting is going to be an oral tablet. You're going to take it with water and it takes a little bit longer, 30 to 60 minutes for it to work. Whereas sublingual nitrates are going to work within five minutes. So with the long acting ones, we're not going to chew them. We're not going to crush them. So educate your patients on that. With sublingual, we, and with, long acting oral or PO, we're going to worry about side effects. So things that you would expect, things like headache, flushing, these are expected. So if you feel lightheaded or dizzy, lay down, orthostatic hypotension. So avoid changing positions suddenly, gradually move from laying down to sitting up to standing up. So that way you don't lose that cerebral perfusion. Because if you do, you'll have a syncopal episode, you fall down, you hit your head, and now you're dead. Nausea and vomiting, diarrhea. I always tell people in pharmacology that if you see a medication, you're taking it for the first time, and or you're looking at a side effect, always look for GI distress. Because it's more common than not with introducing a new drug into your system that you develop some sort of GI distress, especially when it's an oral drug. So look out for that nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. So we're going to educate them again on positional changes. We want to educate them on contraindications. These are potent systemic vasodilators. So what drug are we concerned about? We're concerned about our erectile dysfunction drugs, our AFIL drugs, AFIL. So Tadalafil, Verdanafil, Sildanafil, our Viagra, Cialis, Levitra. So we want to make sure that we educate them because a great question on the boards is going to be a further teaching, further intervention. So this is exactly how I would ask it. So you should write this question down. A 68 year old male patient was recently prescribed nitrates for angina, sublingual nitrates for angina or PO nitrates for um, angina. And which of the following statements by this patient needs further teaching for the education, for the understanding, for the clarification. Um, I'm really excited to get away for the weekend with my partner. I've got this magic little blue pill or sildenafil, Viagra, and I can't wait to use it. And you're going to be like, wait, no, 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 no. That needs further teaching, further intervention, because you cannot take an erectile dysfunction drug, which is a, a vasodilator as well, too, with a potent systemic vasodilator, because we're going to cause contraindication, we're going to cause side effects of really bad orthostatic hypotension or hypotension in general. So again, further teaching for the intervention, a great board question. The way that we take sublingual nitrates, we must educate our patient on. So we're going to take one pill sublingually upon chest pain every five minutes for three doses. If that chest pain does not resolve in that first dose, in that first five minutes, you are automatically calling 911. If it doesn't resolve in three doses, clearly it didn't work the first dose, you're calling 911, but you're continuously taking it because you want to buy yourself time while that ambulance is coming. So you're taking that up to three doses. The pills come in a little dark container, a little dark bottle. 
in order to avoid sunlight. So we're putting in a little tinted bottle and it's only good for six months. So we want to keep it in a cool, dry place. We want to keep it in the bottle. So again, another further teaching for their intervention type of a question because they're education questions, right? So how about um, I'm going to be going on a long drive. I'll put a couple of them in a Ziploc door in my glove compartment just in case. No, you're going to keep them in their bottle. You're going to keep them in a cool, dry place. And you're not going to take them out of the bottle and put them in a Ziploc and throw them in a glove compartment. Heat and sunlight are going to decrease the potency of something that's supposed to save your life. So very important to do that. You can actually take nitrates prophylactically. So if you do have angina, stable angina, because remember, stable angina is upon exertion. So let's just say you know you're going to do something stressful. Exercise. Maybe you're going to do something that's going to trigger that angina. Be in cold temperatures. Eat a large meal. Exertion, right? Stable angina. You can actually take it prophylactically five minutes before whatever you do. So that way you do get that oxygen going to that portion of the heart. Because the last thing we want to do is decrease that portion of the heart because you'll get that chest pain, chest pain, chest pain, which is, in fact, angina. And because it's upon exertion, it is actually stable angina. With the oral or long-acting, there's another way that we can actually give the long-acting one is we can give them a patch. So with the patch, it's typically 12 to 14 hours for one patch. Use one patch at a time, never multiple patches. If it falls off or it loosens, you replace it. But you have to account for the time that you wore it. So for instance, let's just say this patch is good for 12 hours. A little med math here. So the patch is good for 12 hours, but it fell off after three hours. I'm going to replace that patch, but how long am I going to put the next patch on for? I'm going to put the next patch on for nine hours. For nine hours. So again, totaling 12 hours. Three hours that was already on, it fell off. 12 minus three hours that I already had it on equals nine hours for the next patch. We want to put it on a clean, dry place. But what we'll talk about is just patch education in general. So not just nitrate patches, but patch education in general. For the boards, never cut a patch. Never wear more than one patch. You want it on a clean, dry site. Typically, you want to put it on a hairless area where you're never going to shave that area. You never want to create micro cuts because now it's not going transdermally. It's going right into the bloodstream. So don't shave that area. You don't want an infected, wet, or scarred area because that's not typical skin. So again, the patches are made to go through your skin. That's intact. That's intact. When you're discarding it, you fold the patch, wear gloves, and rotate sites. But with nitro patches, you're going to give yourself a break. You take a break from nitrates for a little bit as prescribed by your HCP. So again, this is something that's going to be there. But we take nitrate breaks. So we don't develop tolerance to it and that we're not continuously using that nitrate. So again, give yourself that break from nitrates. Education, education, education. As far as um, lifestyle modifications with nitrates, of course, we're dealing with angina. So teach your patient about needs, nutrition, exercise, ETOH, alcohol, avoid, don't smoke, and sleep. So eliminate those risk factors that are actually going to make this angina worse and hopefully we can try to get this patient off of it without getting them into a stent which is what we're going to have to do eventually if that atherosclerotic plaque continues so we're going to monitor them um, we're going to look for side effects we're going to educate them so very simple when it comes to long acting versus short acting we're long acting we're talking po or patches short acting we're talking about sublingual or sprays Again, for the boards, we like sublingual. Look at the side effects. Again, that headache, flushing, orthostatic hypotension, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Look for those. Educate them on the contraindications, which is, again, those erectile dysfunction drugs that end in AFIL. Teach them about storage and handling. So make sure that they're keeping it in a cool, dry place in that bottle. And again, how we dose it out when we're taking it, when we get that chest pain, when we get that stable angina, when we get that, um, those signs and symptoms starting to approach. Take it sublingually, and remember, if it doesn't resolve in that first five minutes, call 911, continue those doses for three more doses, 
um, as we wait for that. Prophylactically, we can take it um, when we're going to do something that might trigger that angina. And then again, patch education, as I've talked about. So super high yield topic with nitrates and um, with pharmacology here. So again, great, great, great matrix grid style questions on education with nitrates, whether it be long acting or short acting. You can do that. You can basically do the select all that apply right there, or select all that apply question for the teaching for the interventions as I've taught you. So again, nitrates, super, super high yield.